Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another show of harmonics. Today's guest is one of the best guitar players in the San Francisco Bay Area, a great one. Plays with the legendary band Earthquake, Scotty London, brother. How are you here today, man? Doing great, man. Doing Ooh. great. Thanks for Ooh. having me. I feel like I'm on fire next to you, brother. Oh, stop it. How are you really good? You feeling good? You doing oh, all yeah. right? I'm doing good, man. Doing good. You know, the COVID thing's <sighs> slowing everything down for everybody. It's but, terrible, isn't you know, it? Doing all right, getting by, doing the best we can. You know? So let's, let's get into what Scotty London's life's all about. I, I know you're one of the badasses, guitar players and all that. When did you actually start playing music? Uh, when I, was, I was about 15, mm -hmm. I guess, when I started uh, playing guitar. And, you know, at that point, I'm, you know, I'm in high school. And at, back in those days, man, it was all about Led Zeppelin and Hendrix. Mm -hmm and Deep Purple and UFO, you know, that's, that's where I was coming from. So that's, as a high school kid, that was, that was what inspired me. I was a big Richie Blackmore guy, you oh, know? Oh, excellent. Richie Blackmore was the king for me. And so, and Hendrix, of course, Hendrix. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, you know, that's, that's what got me into it initially as a guitar player. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it grows from there and music goes in and out of mm -hmm. phases and stuff. And you kind of follow along and find your way through all that stuff. So, what was your first guitar? Uh, well, I had a really cheapo guitar that I first got. Mm -hmm. uh, I got it for Christmas when I was like 12, never touched it, you wow. know. And then, you know, when I got to be 14, 15 years old, I started goofing around on it, and mm -hmm. a couple of my buddies started playing guitar. Yes. So we all kind of started out together. Mm -hmm. And then by the time I was, I started taking lessons. I took lessons from Vic Trigger. I don't know if you remember oh, the, yes, the Vic Trigger band yeah. from Berkeley. Mm -hmm. um, he ended up being the, the head guy at uh, Musicians Institute down in LA. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so yeah, but anyway. Um, so me and my friends, we were all taking guitar lessons from Vic Trigger and, and getting started playing guitar. And at that point, you know, I was begging my mom, oh, I gotta have a Stratocaster band. Hendrix and Blackmore play Strats. I gotta have a Strat, please, mom, please. So true. And so, you know, she, so she relented uh -huh. and got, got me a Strat. And I, I've still got that Strat to this day, a 78 wow. Strat. Wow, amazing. 78 wood Do you use strat. that at all when you're playing? I do, I do. It's not my main guitar anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's that's the number two that I bring mm. with me to gigs. Wow, that's wild. Seventy eight. So, shoot, that's that's forty two years old. Yeah. Huh? That's pretty yeah. amazing, brother. Pretty amazing. So, in your life, you played with a lot of different bands. So, give me a give me a background on that. You played local clubs. I know you played some big. I, you played some very big shows. But tell me about you. You didn't start immediately. Start. You were doing covers, and then when did you just start doing original music? Uh, well, you know, back in the high school bands, yeah, we were doing covers and mm -hmm. stuff. My first band was called Aftermath. Okay. We were playing high school, you know, and, and we thought we were Aerosmith, you know, okay. two guitar players I and a flamboyant singer. lead singer. All right. Uh, but, you know, uh, um, it wasn't too long after that, I guess early 20s, mm -hmm. uh, we started a band called Cement Trampoline. Great name. And uh, we started out playing covers, mm -hmm. you know, we couldn't find a lead singer that we liked. Mm -hmm. So we started singing ourselves, right. me and my partner Jim, mm -hmm. my best friend since fourth grade, you know. Wow. Um, and so, you know, with, we kind of discovered when we started singing mm -hmm. that our voices sounded better together, right? So we started working on harmonies and singing harmony and dual vocal parts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So naturally that led us to kind of, you know, playing Beatles songs and, and Everly Brothers and that kind of oldie oh, great, stuff great. with harmonies. Right, right, right. Makes it beautiful. Yeah. And so, you know, that kind of, we started out as doing kind of an oldies tribute thing. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, you know, we started after, I don't know, three or four years, we started writing songs. And then from there, it kind of developed and, and we got a pretty good following. We uh, made a little demo tape and we gave it to, uh, I don't know if you know, Russ Ketter. I've heard of that name. He was uh, he was the owner of uh, Rather Ripped Records in mm -hmm. Berkeley. Right. 
if you remember rather ripped of records course in I Berkeley. Do. Yeah. Uh, legendary. Record legendary. Store, right? You know. Yes. Um, and so and he signed us to a little indie record deal and we put out a couple of records. Mm -hmm. You know, we did good. We thought we were hot stuff, you know, mm -hmm. back then. Of course. And, uh, you know, we had a couple albums out and we were playing big shows, opening for, you know, guys from the Velvet Underground and mm -hmm. Psychotic Pineapple and just, you know. Just names. Doing, yeah, doing good shows. Mm -hmm. Berkeley Square, you know. Berkeley Square was the, a fun place. All the Keystones. Yeah, it's that great kind places of stuff. played. Um, so, you know, and that, that was when we started writing music, though, mm -hmm. was cement, in Cement Trampoline. Um, and we had kind of, Jim and I had kind of a friendly rivalry, you know. He'd write a song. And I'd go, man, that's pretty damn good, you know. I, okay, all right, all right, I got one for you, you know. So I'd, I'd hammer one or two out, and he'd go, all right, all right, you know. And we'd go back and forth, and eventually we had a pretty good repertoire of original songs. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it started. And to this day, you know, Jim passed away several years ago now, but mm -hmm. uh, I still kind of think, how would how would Jim approach this? He's kind of my songwriting sounding Partner. board to this day, right? right you know. Love you, Jim. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I even when I'm still writing songs to this day, I still kind of think Thank about you, that that kind that's, of. That's 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 a beautiful yeah. thing. That is really beautiful. Um, and and so that was kind of the birth of, of my personal songwriting mm -hmm. journey was mm -hmm. in Cement Trampoline mm -hmm. and, you know, putting out getting material ready for the couple of records mm -hmm. that we got signed mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, you know, once you get into that, you, you can't stop. No, you can't. It's yeah. in your blood. Yeah. It's in your DNA, I should say, right? And so then I start, you know, reading all kinds of books and, you know, songwriting craft. And, you know, because mm -hmm. there, there is, people don't realize that there are. The technique. There's, there's very specific techniques and very specific little tricks and mm -hmm. very specific things that work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. There, there's, you know, so you're not really trying to reinvent the wheel no. when you're when you're writing a song. You're doing proven techniques that work mm -hmm. and and things like that. And so if you really dig into it and learn the songwriting craft, and again, the, nobody better than the Beatles, oh, the songwriting nobody, craft. You know no. what I mean? So if you study the Beatles at all, you you learn quite you a bit about up. songwriting. You learn how it's done, right? Yeah. So, so when you're when you're when you're doing your craft, let's just say let let's just picture uh, Scotty's in at home. Got maybe got the little candle going, or you got your little little drink or whatever. Got your guitar. Um, what key do you play in, or do you play in all a variety of different keys? What is the key? What is what is your <coughs> favorite key? Because um, I know you play with a lot of lead singers. You got a great yeah. one right now. We'll talk about him a little bit later. Uh -huh. uh, it kind of depends on what guitar I'm playing. If I'm just sitting around on the couch and I pick up my acoustic that's sitting around, mm -hmm. I'm usually in the, the key of G. Really? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Open, open G, mm -hmm. um, just because you know you've got all your open chords available to you right, right, in right, that key. Right, right, right. Um, Only one sharp. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so the, yeah, that's just the, the easy way to go. You right, know, if right. you're strumming an acoustic guitar. If I'm playing an electric guitar, you know, it could mm -hmm. be anything, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm really writing a song, mm -hmm. I will play with different keys to see where it fits the vibe, you right. know? What, where does this How riff does it formulate? fit the best? How yeah. does it formulate? I mean, a lot of times, you know, if you've got a lot of open string riffs, mm -hmm. you're going to be in E or A or mm -hmm. one of those open mm -hmm. type keys. But most of the time, I will kind of play with the key to see where that, where that whole vibe fits the best. And to be honest, I don't really think about what key the singer's going to be singing it in. <laughs> um, he'll have to adapt to the song, exactly. I suppose. Exactly. You have to. I, that's true. That's very true, you know. Derek and I do the same thing. He goes, what key you want to sing? I always say E, A, D, whatever. And then he goes, but we're going to do it in G. Okay. <laughs> you well, know, you, you, got, so. you got to do that right. You got to follow your partner. So when you're doing that and you're just, uh, are you actually writing the melody? You're getting the chord structure right. You, are you going one, four, one, four, five pattern? You going minor? or no, you just, you just. I rarely do one, four, five. That, you're just that's, doing, what, what are you doing? That's been done. That's blues, right? That's been done. So what do you normally go into? You just. Um, that kind of depends on how inspiration hits you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I'll, I'll think of, or, you know, a, a cool phrase will pop into my head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, hell, that's a, that'd be a great little catchphrase for a song. You know, there's my hook. Right. Right. And so then it's all about turning that into a musical statement mm -hmm. and it all builds out from there. Mm -hmm. um, other times I'll be noodle around on the guitar and just go, oh, that's kind of a cool riff. Mm -hmm. What? And it all builds out from there. So it, there's no one way of doing it. You know, mm -hmm. it's kind of whatever 
is happening at the time, that's working, go with that. Let's go you with know? it. Right. And so that's, that's the approach I take to it anyway, is just, you know, whenever something hits, follow up on it. That's it. Feed on it. I, I want to I wanna say something real quick. What he just said about noodling on the guitar, that's old expression. I'm just noodling on the guitar. I call my guitar players up back in the day, and then I go, what are you doing? They're, I'm just noodling around my guitar, <laughs> you know, because you're just kind of, you're riffing all over trying to figure this thing yeah, out. just playing. Just playing. So you're right now, you're in the midst of, uh, I know you're a guitar teacher. Mm -hmm. So how does that affected you, this whole pandemic, the last, what yeah. is it? Now we're in the ninth month or tenth? Yeah, ninth yeah. month. Too many months. Yes. Um, well, it's affected everybody. Right. You know, I mean, the band Nobody's has playing. no gigs. <laughs> yeah. The band has no gigs. Right. That put everything, you know, brought it all to a screaming halt. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were just at the very beginning of the songwriting process for an album. We wanted to record an album this year. Right. And so we, you know, that all stopped. Mm -hmm. Everything stopped. Everything stopped. Everything just stopped. Mm -hmm. So, you know, no gigs, no recording. Um, we're still songwriting, okay. you know, but, uh, but we have to do that gen virtually. Virtually, right. Yeah, Remotely. you know, with FaceTime and Zoom and all that kind of stuff. Um, so we're doing that. Okay. You know, I've, I've put a few songs in. Robbie's co-writing with everybody and writing, mm -hmm. he, you know, and, and Johnny. Everybody's contributing. Right. Um, and we're, you know, we got a pretty good batch of songs right now, good. but we're just kind of waiting until we're able to... Go into get in the studio. studio, right? You know, right. get in the studio and safely record it with everyone, and you know, not have to be so so rigid. walking on eggshells. Yeah, I know. It's, know? it's so odd. So, how many students? I know you're. Um, I've heard about your your teaching guitar. Mm -hmm. How how has this affected you? You what was the height of your, uh, you know, your students till now? What do you, what did you have at one time? Uh, well, at one time I had about. 40, close to 40, that mm. was the peak. Usually mm. I'm at around 30, 32, 33 students mm. How about per now? month. How, really, how about now? Uh, well, per week, actually. Mm. Mm. Um, now I'm down to 16, 18, something like that, I think it is. Wow. So I'm at about half, right. you know? It's, it's the, the pandemic has cut my business, you know? That's my bread and butter, exactly. right? You know? Exactly, yeah, You exactly. and I know, you know, you yeah. don't, we don't make a lot of money yeah. playing yeah. clubs. Right. So, um, Teaching, you know, is where I make my money, and it's I'm living on half my dough, wow. you know. So it's 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 not an easy time. It's not an easy time. So when a student comes to you, I just want to because you're you got to be one of the most likable guys on the scene. You know that well, man. Thank you. you know, just <laughs> you just you, you know how when we met, it's just you're just a great guy. Um, how do you start a student? Like say when a student, you got you got beginners possibly mm -hmm. intermediate and then you got guys that are really mm -hmm. trying to learn some other tricks from you and your your experience how, how does that how do you how do you how do you balance that out you know with you got to be real kind <coughs> of the beginner you don't want them to leave right well that's that's part of the, the thing anyway is encouragement mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. no matter what level they're at or how good or bad they are mm -hmm. encouragement is part of the thing right you know what I mean I, I always say you know you're doing great Keep it up, man. Practice this week. Do great. Don't mm. forget to bring your check next week, you know? Right. It's your bread and butter. <laughs> yeah. It so, just be realistic, um, right? But, you know, it depends, honestly, on where the student is, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. The very beginner students, little kids, you know, seven, eight, nine years old, mm -hmm. you got to start them out with Mary Had a Little Lamb playing just a little melody on one string, mm -hmm. learning how to press down notes and pick at the same time. And, you know, <laughs> yes. it's just a mechanics thing. Right, right. And so, you know, that's where you start little kids in the very, very beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, intermediates who can already play some chords, you know, mm -hmm. you'll, then you'll jump into teaching them some songs, you mm -hmm. know. Okay, let's do Hotel California or, wow. you know, wow. songs. You yeah. know, they want to learn songs at that right. point. Um, and so, you know, you got to kind of judge every student mm -hmm. for where they are when they start. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, you get more advanced students. All right, now we're, let's get into modes. And let's get into different soloing things and mm -hmm. different, mm -hmm. you know, key structures mm -hmm. and, and um, melodic theory and mm -hmm. all kinds mm -hmm. of things like that. Songwriting, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, I love getting into the songwriting end of things with, right. with, with students because there's so much to talk about. Right? right. Little tricks. Again, those little tricks, little tricks. and little techniques that work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those are those are things that are um, key. Yeah, that's the key. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's what really is fun to turn people on to, right? Mm -hmm. When people discover that, 
then all of a sudden they're sitting in their car listening to a song and they go, oh, well there's a, there's that middle eight that he was talking about, right? There's that Bingo. bridge. Oh, double chorus at the end. He was just telling me about that, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, things like that. Just, yeah. just. And it makes you feel good and makes you motivated even more to get them involved even more with their instruments. Absolutely. And, you know, and I think back to, again, I'll mention him again, Vic Trigger, my guitar teacher, right? Huge influence on me. Right. Right? And mm -hmm. started my whole journey pretty much. And Is Vic still alive? No, he's not. Oh, he okay. passed okay. away a few years ago, too. Um, what was I saying? Oh, but to be kind of that guy mm -hmm. for other people mm -hmm. is um, huge for me. It's I, a blessing. I just, I, yeah, I, I really enjoy it, and it it's really a is a blessing. It's spiritual connection. It because, is. Because what you're saying right there is you're taking the man that actually showed you, a music teacher, and you're carrying that on. Exactly. Carrying it on to exactly. others. And like I said, it was so huge for me if, you know, I, I don't, expect to be that huge for all my students, but mm. if I can be that huge for even one or two of those people. You've made it. That's huge. Right, it's huge. Right? Yeah. And and I I hear all the time from people, you know, students that haven't I haven't seen in four or five years will call me up and go, oh dude, I'm in a band now and we're playing out and it's great. That's and I just want to thank you for my journey and mm. you know and you know, so that's that's the kind of stuff besides makes the it money. Happen. Yeah. That, makes that really makes happen. makes it, you know, of uh a fun and worthwhile profession, you right. know? Because I always told myself, as a kid, you know, I was pretty realistic. Mm -hmm. You know, very few people become mega rock stars. Very few. You know, and so, you know, I never really expected to be a big rock star. Mm -hmm. Of course, I wanted to. Of course. We all did. Well, yes, we all course. did, you know, that's, 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 that's the, the dream. dream. That is the dream. But I always told myself, you know, if I could just make a living mm -hmm. on my guitar, mm -hmm. I'd be a happy man. Amen. You know? And so I've been doing that for... Bring a lot of joy, brother. For, for many years now. You're, you bring a lot of joy when you're on stage, and you can see that you have a lot of joy. I think once the pandemic comes back, uh, gets out, and we get back to playing live again, I think there's going to be a whole different kind of joy. Oh, absolutely. You know, because you're missing it. it you know, this is the first time it kind of like for everything... Us just, and the audience. Yes. And I think that's a, a, a thing. Let's let's talk about um, let's talk about your band, Earthquake. Okay. Long life, long life, long oh, lines, yeah. long. You got roots there. Um, let's talk about each of them individually because you're there. Mm -hmm. um, let's we'll go we'll go to the we'll go to the rhythm section first. Let's go to Larry Lynch, great drummer. Oh, huh? Great drummer, great vocalist. Man, totally that guy can sing. Sing. Yeah. He added a whole another dimension to our band when he when he joined. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just the harmonies and the the, the beautiful vocals that he adds. Mm -hmm. In addition to being a badass drummer, badass drummer, um, and just the you know the his professionalism. Exuberance. Yeah, he's he's and he's a great guy. Right. You know, so played with Ken. Yeah. Played with yeah Greg. from the Greg Ken band. Yeah. Um, you know, played on all those great records, all those million, million selling so records. Big, big time. Yeah, he played on all those. So, um, yeah. Great guy. Nothing like Larry, man. Nothing like Larry. Nothing like Larry. Such an exuberant guy. And, and that's how when, we, when you went to uh, your show when I did the MC for you guys, when you did the video, I got to reconnect with Larry because mm -hmm. we played Long Branch years and year, 40 uh, years ago, yeah. right? So then um, the Jet. Jimmy Jet. Yeah, Jimmy Jet, man. Smalley, let, tell me about him. I know he's going through a little bit of health issues. He's got some health issues he's dealing with now. I don't know how much we want to get into that right yeah, here. Yeah, but, uh, Great bass player. Oh, unbelievable bass uh -huh. player. Again, you know, all the guys in the band are top notch. Class A. Yeah, top notch. So <laughs> yeah. that, that's, that's what's fun about it. But mm -hmm. um, Jimmy's the nicest guy in the world. Of course. Jimmy's just the nicest guy in the world, man. Mm -hmm. I love Jimmy. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, a great musician, great mm -hmm. ear. Mm -hmm. Um, Great stage presence. Yeah, exuberant. I stays mean, in the pocket. That's that's something that that I feel like this band really has going for them is that everybody likes each other, genuinely likes yeah, each other, yeah. and we get along well, mm -hmm. and we you know we have fun together, and should be playing Fillmore. That's why I tell people. I'd love you know, to. Huh? I'd you love know what to. I mean? So and then let's go let's go over to your lead vocalist who we've known a long time, mm -hmm. Johnny O'Day. Johnny O'Day. Johnny got me in the band basically. Mm -hmm. um, you guys were in a band together. 
previously years ago? Uh, was, not really. No, you guys we, knew, we've just known you, each other. You guys kind of rubbed shoulders. Yeah. Then, yeah. Oh yeah. We we've been good, very good friends for mm -hmm. many many years. Great singer. Uh, back in my okay. cement trampoline days, Johnny was in a band called Air Raid. Uh, yes. With the great Tommy Mary. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know Tommy. Oh, so I know Tommy yeah. too. Got to so, get him on the show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and cement trampoline and Air Raid were very different bands but mm -hmm. we were like brother bands because we hung out all the time, all the time and right. gigged together and did all kinds of stuff together mm -hmm. and, and you know they'd come to our gigs and we'd go to their gigs and, support yeah and and you know even when we weren't gigging we were hanging out you know we, we were <laughs> those were the party days uh -huh, right of course so um but johnny was the singer in air raid mm -hmm. and so that was when i first met him and that was again many many moons ago mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh so we've known each other for a long time great guy and oakland uh, boy yeah. Oakland boy. Oakland boy. Yeah. And so uh, he he was recording a solo album. With uh, Tommy. With Tommy. Right. Audacious Rising. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wanted me to do a slide track on, on the album. Um, and so he called me up and said, you know, I want you to want you to play slide on this song. And absolutely. Let's do it. How are we going to do this? Tommy. Well, Tommy's going to be in your house at your house tomorrow or, you know, next week, whatever he said. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do it. So Tommy Tom's came over. We, we recorded uh, the slide tracks mm -hmm. and, and uh, the record came out, you know, mm -hmm. great sounding record. Mm -hmm. And then about, I don't know, I don't even remember exactly, maybe six months after that, Johnny called me up and he said, hey, man, I'm the new singer in Earthquake. Mm -hmm. We need another guitar player. Boom. All right. Yeah. So I didn't get no hesitation there, you know. <laughs> Earthquake. Yes. Man. Huh? Wow, all right, That's, count me in. Count you I'll in. I'll be there, I'll be there. That leads right into the one and only, the great Robbie Mr. Dunbar. Mr. Dunbar. What do you think of Robbie? Robbie's just such a fabulous. Oh, he's a great guy, but he's an unbelievable musician. Oh. I mean, he's an unbelievable musician. Another one, grade A, top A. Well, huh? yeah, I mean, it, it's, just a it's, pro. It's, it's, it's an honor and a pleasure to play with Robbie. Mm -hmm. He's, he's, um, He's so accomplished, right? I mean, he's got a degrees. The, uh, yeah, he's got musical degrees. He's, you know, tunes pianos by mm -hmm. ear. It's amazing. And you know, he he's just one of the best I've ever seen at mm -hmm. just feeling out and sounding out harmony mm -hmm. and and just hearing things, right? Like if I'm listening to a song and I'll I'll have to sit down with my guitar and go, oh, all right, he, oh, that's where he's going. Robbie will just sit there and go, oh, he went to the flat five there, or, you know, he went to, you know, that, hear that's a minor, yeah, he just he hears it hear and it. knows instantly, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, where, where things are going. And so he's, and then, again, just feeling out harmony parts and, and putting chords together and weird chords together and cool chords together and just things like that. Nobody better, nobody. right? Nobody, nobody better. So, um. Well, I'm excited to hear your. Once you guys get, I can't wait to hear you guys' album because yeah. we're our, we finished ours, oh. and, and so now it's on for sale. So we're talking about a guitar player and uh, and talking about Robbie and how great that how Earthquake is. It's really developed into a whole other thing. I think that it's going to be much greater sum because your your all your parts are so you all merge when you guys you guys all merge. And now that you're writing. It's going to be a little bit different. You probably is. do your old, old, old covers and stuff like that from Earthquake, but now you have your new music that is represents the five of you. The new band, yeah. So this, this, um, as we wind down, uh, as you know, this, this, um, this segment of of uh, harmonics is basically we're going to dedicate this to Eddie Van Halen. All right. Um, so it, it's it's kind of neat to have somebody of your stature because. You are really one of the, when you're on stage, you're exuberant, dude. I mean, I feel you, uh, you know, you're, you're great. You guys all mesh together. You move around the stage. You're like, you're like, you're smooth, man. I go, look at this cat, man. He's <laughs> over here and now he's over there. Um, so that we're going to dedicate this segment to Eddie Van Halen. What did you think of Eddie when you first heard oh, Eddie Van Halen? Same as everyone, you know, mind blown. <laughs> yeah. Right, you know, um, I'm of the belief that there's maybe three, four, maybe five guitar players ever that really changed the game. He changed it. And you know, you got Chuck Berry, mm -hmm. right? Who mm -hmm. pretty much invented gu rock Thank and you. roll guitar. Yeah, exactly, right. The rock and roll guitar, that's right. Chuck Berry. Right. Then you got Hendrix, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Changed the game, made mm -hmm. that crazy electric guitar, do stuff that nobody had ever 
Yeah. You know? Who thought? And then you got Eddie. Eddie. And Eddie changed the game 100%, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. It was the birth of Shred. The birth right? of Shred. And so that's and, a good and that's guess. that's that's what Eddie brought to the mm-hmm. game is mm-hmm. just, you know, the virtuosity of guitar in rock and, and, and heavy music. Oh, he's and he and that was, and there was nobody guy. better. Nobody better. And that see, that's another thing. So Eddie exuberated and how he smiled. Mm-hmm. You do almost the same thing to me. Well, I, when I watch you, I say to myself, look, at him, he's just happy as hell. He's just grooving. How do you, you not know? have fun playing music? Huh? How can uh, you know? How right? do you not have fun? It's playing just so music? great. Well, Scotty, I want to thank you uh, for coming on the show. My pleasure. Uh, it seems like you know we're, we could go on and on. Uh, I, I'm well, going to invite will. you about yes, off I want camera. you yeah off camera <laughs> and um, and playing together. Blue Voodoo and Earthquake will be playing together hopefully in the future. Absolutely. Um, I want to thank you. I hope, wish you the best of luck um, to get more students, but really just to get that album out. You yeah. Know, it looks like it's going to probably Looking happen for you guys it. in probably 2021. Yeah. You know, uh, but right here, ladies and gentlemen, I want to tell you, man, it's this guy right here. If you get an opportunity to actually see Earthquake, keep your eyes on this guy. But the whole band you're going to keep your eyes on because they're exuberant. They're exciting. They're going to be somewhat much newer coming out in 2021. Uh, he talked about the pandemic, as you know, it, it has hurt all of us. But as customary, before we leave, uh, I always like to give a shout out to all the people that watch us worldwide. I like to thank my producers, Chad and Sujoy, for letting us come back and coming in the studio and, and doing this show. This has been a long time to do a, lo- a live show. We'll be on our podcast, uh, Harmonics Podcast with Gregory Korea. I want to thank everybody that makes it all happen. And what I normally do, I give a shout out and we give a kiss to all the women out there. All right. Okay, here we that. go. Peace and love to you. <laughs>